Hey, what's up guys? This is John Spear Warhammer. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of print reading. This is going to be on my new series, um, How to Be a Proper Foreman. Alright, so first thing on our list is going to be the first page of the e-sheets. I didn't mention this before. This is designed for electrical foremans or anyone who wants to learn the plan set and how to read it, how to look at it, and a plan for the future. So today we are going to be looking at the first page, which is E001 in this particular case, and just go over the basics. So symbol legend. Let's see. This is going to tell you exactly what it is on this. So let's just do a quick example um, right here. So these little guys are switches with the D and if we go back up to see what that is just for this particular example we are looking at a switch with a D, which is a dimmer switch that's flush mounted up to 44 inches unless otherwise indicated. So, <clears throat> what that is saying in a nutshell is that you need to get a dimmer switch. It needs to be flush mounted up to 44 inches. Um, and it's going to stay up to 44 inches unless it is specifically noted on the plans that it needs to be a different height. So that is what that means in a nutshell. And then it'll go all the way down. This is a single pole occupancy sensor. They make three ways, so it's good to know. This is a three-way wall switch, three-way wall dimmer. You know, so this kind of breaks it up. So you can see occupancy sensor, thermal overload switch, a quad receptacle, a regular receptacle. Once again, 18 inches is going to be the typical height unless it is specifically noted somewhere on the plans that it needs to be a different height. Um, floor mounted duplex receptacle, datacom, recess lighting, surface mount, um, all that good stuff. So you can go down this entire list and you'll see something. And if you have any questions, you can always refer back to this first page. The engineer or whoever drew the plans should have put everything that you're going to need to find on that particular list. Next thing we're going to go through is the electrical specifications. So, the electrical specifications are basically the do's and do nots of your project. Um, this is project based. So, what that means is, you know, these are going to be different on literally every single project. Some are big, some are tiny, some are right in the middle. This is, to, in my opinion, uh, kind of a small one. So, you know, just looking at it real quick, all wiring shall be in rigid conduit, intermediate conduit, or electrical met metallic tubing, EMT. So it, I was planning my stuff out, and I, on this particular job, I would do EMT. Um, no aluminum conduit shall be allowed unless specifically indicated on the drawings, which it's not. So, you know, anything below grade has to be a minimum size of one inch. Um, all your EMT couplings and connectors shall be compression tight, so that means that there's no set screws allowed. Um, all this stuff is good to know. So, let's see, all conductors should be copper. Number 12 is the minimum size, you know, and if it's 60 to 100 feet, it has to be 10s. If it's over 100 feet, it has to be number 8. So they're basically just auto telling you what to do. The use of MC is not permitted. Good information to know, everything has to be in pipe. All disconnects shall be heavy duty. All good information. 
these get into more specific parts of the plan so it's going to be demolition general notes you know so that will go over all your during the demo and then the project's general notes so each one has a specific reason um, it's good to read the entire thing before you even move on to the next stage so now we move on to the fixture schedule this is going to be your list of fixtures that you get um, it's up to the project manager to get the correct stuff and if it's not per spec then you need to make those mental notes in your head that this isn't spec these aren't the right part numbers this is going to be the right stuff but the PM should get you exactly what you need in a spec book which we'll go over in a later video but um, that is what that is for over here on your right hand side we're looking at you know just basic information so this is going to be the architect the person who drew it the project name and location the date that it was done on if there was any revisions to this set of plans and usually the date associated with that who it was drawn by a brief description of what this page is going to tell you about and the page number so if we go down to this one this is the demo plan the floor plan that's demo special systems demo one line demo the new lighting lighting is usually circuited so it'll tell you the specific way that it wants to be circuited. This is a home run. So in this particular case, you're going to go to panel HA and the second circuit breaker. Okay, this one's going to go to panel LB, circuit breaker 4. Panel LB, circuit breaker 2 so on and so forth if you notice this little guy right here is going to be an oval that usually indicates a key note on the plans so here is your key notes key note 3 install a 6 inch LED downward light type C please refer to the fixture schedule for details so that's usually what that means and general notes are referring to the general note for this specific sheet. Okay? So keynotes are the ovals for this specific sheet. These are going to be your grid lines. So grid line E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can mark a measure if there's no walls or stuff like that. All right, let's go through this. Let's see. I'm just gonna try to find. This is gonna be your power page. So it's gonna show you receptacles, your disconnects, panels, things like that. Um, lighting plans for whatever reason will show the electrical room but they will not really show the panels. You can usually find that on the power sheet. So this particular one's right here. My transformer's right here. CT right here. Um, you know, this is a very typical way to draw an RTU or AKA a rooftop unit, number nine. Um, so on this particular one, it's kind of funky to read, but it's a perfect example. So this one right here, you can always verify, but circuit LA-12 is gonna be a rooftop receptacle, which is kind of a mistake, it should be a GFCI 
but it is indicating that it is a normal receptacle. So that will be an RFI, which is a request for information, which I'll go over in a later series. This is going to tell you that it goes to HP 14, 16, 18. It's a three phase RTU, but usually RTUs are dotted out to show that they are on the roof. Same thing with this one, same thing with that receptacle. So good to know that you know you can have an RFI press for information on that type of item. Um, these are going to be your data sheets or your special systems. Special systems include fire alarm, which sometimes they have their own plan, sometimes they don't. Um, fire alarm, data, nurse call, um, door openers, special floor boxes right here, um, grounding, details usually in IT rooms, um, things like that. It's going to be your electrical details page. It's going to show you basically the very, you know, sometimes there'll be like a whole room marked out that you can refer to. Um, these are very minimal. Um, this is going to be your one line. This is a very important page. Um, when sizing your feeders and things like that. You can see now we have a circle and an oval. So circles in New Mexico anyway usually indicate that it's part of a feeder schedule. Ovals mean that uh, key note. So once again general notes refer to the entire sheet Feeder schedules refer to circles. If you look right there. Keynotes are ovals. So let's just take a look for example. Usually ends mean new, ex means existing. You know, just FYI. So these in parentheses means it's a new run. We're going to look at feeder schedule one, feeder schedule number one, install three parallel four inch conduits with four six hundreds copper CU. It could be AL, which means aluminum, and one three odd ground. So you can basically see from point A to point B on the schematic what this is. Um, Here's usually your grounding detail of all the stuff that you need to have grounded throughout the system. This thing's telling you you need to go to building steel, you need to go to slab, cold water, two ground rods driven since we live in the desert. We need two um, panel boards, main bonding jumpers, X, Y, Z. You know, this is your grounding detail. This is your grounding electrode what you can need to use, what size of wire you're going to need to do what. Um, one thing I didn't mention but I'll go over real quick is you're going to need a scale in the near future. It's going to be a new tool. Each plan has a scale level which is going to be 1 8th. So for every 1 8th inch on your scale is going to equal one foot. So if we were to look at this and this was one eighth right here, you know, this is one, two, three, four, four feet over here to the corner. So that being said, just FYI, forgot to mention that and I apologize. So now we move on to pound schedules. Panel schedules are going to be for the specific panels. Um, let's see, let's just go through it real quick. The name of the panel, what room it's in, any drawing references, which there was none, the service, 
which is going to be your voltage and your wiring configuration. So in this case, it's a 4277 system. That's three phase four wire. It's a 1200 amp. You know, it has main breaker. And so there's two different types. There's a main breaker or main circuit breaker, MCB or MLB or MLO, which is main lug only. The AIC rating, what is it going to be? So in this case, it's surface mounted, NEMA 1, which means it's indoor and it's 42 poles. So NEMA, the NEMA rating means NEMA 1 is indoor, NEMA 3R is outdoor, NEMA 4 is, you know, um, extreme location. Um, you know, it means it's stainless steel, which could be in a kitchen, it could be in a wet location that has, you know, vapors, something crazy, you know. Um, all right, so that's just kind of what it is. Here's an example of main lug only, any accessories it comes with. So, this can be a neutral bar or a ground bar. Um, let's see, and that's basically going to be the nutshell of quick crash course on plan reading for a new foreman or anyone who wants to learn. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Once again, my name is John Spear. I'm with Warhammer Electric. Um, I'm just doing my best to ready the new and up-and-coming group of electricians um, I do my best I love doing these videos they are my absolute favorite you know so if you guys get a chance please like and subscribe check me out I'm gonna be doing an entire series on how to be a foreman um, computer stuff regular stuff, how to be a leader, things like that. Um, once again, my name is John Spear, Warhammer Electric. You can check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok even. We're on everything. So give us a like, give us some love. If you love the video, tell me about it. If you hate the video, please tell me about it. I'm trying to learn myself how to make better videos for you guys. So, um, until next time, you know, I appreciate your time. Have a good day.